Stand clear. 100% wild podcast. So for all you listeners, hello and welcome to definitely not your favorite outdoor podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drury Outdoors 100% Wild Podcast, powered by DeerCast. This is episode number 259, if you can believe it. And if you are watching the podcast, if you're only listening to the podcast, you should really go over to DeerCast, check it out over on YouTube, check it out. We have a brand new set, brand new look, and a new logo, whole thing, new format. We're excited for today, and we got a special guest. Old man winner, Terry Drury. Terry, what's up, man? Not much. This is pretty cool, honestly. This is a, kind of a monumental event today. You know, you yeah. got a new set, and I'm honored to be on this set today. That's right. Pretty sweet. And, and you mentioned the people that are listening or watching. I'm still wondering why. <laughs> are you and You're us one both. of them. You're one of them. <laughs> right. You're a closet fan. <laughs> well, and so... I should say, if you're listening, it's also important to note that two of the three of us have collared shirts on today. Oh. That's rare. Oh, I got a t-shirt on under it. I'm the third. I'm I'm one of none. (laughs) (laughs) You've got a Van Heusen shirt in the back, right? Yeah, that's right. You can slip that on any time now. But yeah, so the guys have been hard at work building this new set, and it's loaded with all kinds of bits from Jury Outdoors history, and it's kind of an homage to where we've been, but it's also got a little bit of high-tech flair as to where we're going. That's right. So, you know, when you look at it, he talks about the little bits of history. Basically, when we looked around the studio, we thought, what junk? can we throw up on this <laughs> podcast set and this is where we landed so you look back we got heart attack which was a deer that you know <sighs> up, up in iowa mark's place that was really kind of famous during that period when they were after him indeed jared uh, they went on a shed hunt and i don't remember how this probably 15 years ago or at longer least. yeah it's been a while and mm-hmm. uh, went on a shed hunt and uh, back then mark had a big uh, big deal you know a bunch of people would come in on the team and jared lurk found it dead and uh, not far from the road, if no, I recall. about 70 yards, I yeah. think, Jeez. Yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And yeah. it, am I correct in that it was 28 inches wide? I don't remember. It, exact it, width. At yeah. the time, it was top five, you yeah. know, it would have been top five type deer in Iowa. So it, it's, it's, it's a giant, honestly. Well, we were enamored with it, and so was Mark. I mean, he had video footage and trail camera photos mm. and all that stuff. And, and this was one they were after, you know, because you get – pictures of one like that you obviously are gonna you know kind of dedicate your entire season to it and then they ended up finding it during shed season and i think he remembered when it fell off the radar you know yeah. and like i'm sure it, he did <laughs> yeah to the date yeah but it disappeared and and he had you know feelings that it might have been poached or it might have got mm-hmm. locked up with another buck and yeah and lo and behold they found it not far off the road yeah yeah so a couple other cool things of course this portrait we've had lee jost on <laughs> the podcast before and a, a very ex, ex, <laughs> we had lots of expletives yeah we had to we had to uh, provide a warning for that episode because <laughs> thank you for saying that word because he keeps, i couldn't say it he couldn't say <laughs> ex, a mouthful x x <laughs> bad well, words he said a lot of bad words <laughs> and this guy read. is so talented but at the time this was one of our, of our first mark and terry's first photo shoots with lee jost and back at th- that day i believe he was helping with mad calls he was working on a new logo for mad at the time and jury outdoors he helped us create the shield logo at that time and this was one of the favorite moments and he sent uh he sent us this portrait or this canvas uh after the fact so uh, one of our fond fond pictures from back in the day and we love lee Cho. So i mean we're huge fans of his his work is second to none i mean he's one of the best in the world in the outdoor Mm-hmm. industry i mean he's just he's really really extremely talented and and his work speaks for itself but besides that he's a very charismatic charismatic individual along with very colorful individual very colorful. i mean he's one of a kind but we love lee <laughs> but bigger than life I, i'm curious terry do you remember what the motivation like what what you guys were saying what was happening because that's such a great it wasn't shot. what they were saying it was what was being said to them no. oh well and we were the banter going back and forth was now that you know how Lee is, it's even worse in the field. So <laughs> we were imagine. having a lot of fun with him. And, and we didn't want to be there. Number one, we didn't enjoy We never did like doing photo shoots, but we enjoyed doing them with Lee. They were fun. He made them imagine. fun, and that's how we got that that uh, smile Jeez. and that moment in time. Yeah, so we got some, some DOD neon on here, things, different logos from our past, and um, – uh, 
you know, just a, a few trinkets, you, our YouTube 100,000 subscriber plaque that we got from YouTube. Mm-hmm. And of course, on the sides, a, a turkey from King of the Spring. It was the I measured the beard. I measured the spur. That was Chad Kilmer's famous line from King of the Spring, the TV show that we did back in 2012. And that was a bird that actually Team T-Bird took. I killed it. It was the biggest bird of the year. We had a contest for the heaviest, right, I guess, right. the biggest bird per NWTF uh, you know, scoring. How much did it weigh? It was 25 pounds, if Holy I remember. Like uh, yeah, and like 11-inch beard or something. I don't remember what the spur- spurs were, but... King of the Spring days, we never tried so hard to win one event in our lives, and Mark never tried so hard to, to lose, lose an event, and he still won. Yeah. <laughs> he, it, we, it was just tough. It was a tough <laughs> oh, year. It was bad. And, you know, it was really tough for Team T-Bird. Well, Comstock and I both went, I think, the entire season Without and killing. never killed a turkey. Oh, First my. time ever. So, oh, yeah. First at this time point, ever. I don't remember episode four or five, something like that. I, it wasn't going so hot for us. So <laughs> we actually, this turkey, it was funny because – we go and and Chris, I'll never forget it. He had we had split up, and Chris was kind of going and looking for some turkeys because we weren't yeah. having any luck that morning up it the roost. Bad. And so he says, uh, "I have a, a Struder." <laughs> he spelled it wrong. I'll never forget. He texted us that, and uh, we hauled butt and went over to one of his spots, and uh, we made it over there. And we were running up against the clock. Missouri season ends at one o'clock, mm-hmm. and. Um, I'll never forget. Dad says, you know what? At this point, the season's been going horrible. He's like, I'm just going to stay back here at the truck because there was, we had to go down and we had, a lot to, of crawling. Okay. You know, we had to get down into a creek, creek. You know, fish our way and get kind of pop up. And the, the odds were really not great. And uh, we had Aaron Bennett, Ryan Narup, Chris Comstock and myself slipping and sliding through this creek bed. And it was one of those deals that was really the high terrain. It, yeah. High, high. Yeah. And so, Chris snuck up, he peeks his head up over the, the bank, and this turkey is within 10, yeah. oh. 10 steps. Yeah. And so he, you know, I get the motion, I come up and I'm, you know, slowly trying to get up and I'm looking, I'm peeking, and all of a sudden the turkey's right there and the scope, it it's so close that it's like the scope is filling up the scope big time. And uh, so we, we made the shot and killed the bird right there. And we were on, I mean, it was right before one o'clock. We were on cloud nine and we won the day, but uh, we lost, lost the war, so to speak. That was a that was a tremendous hunt. Wasn't that turkey maybe four or five steps? Four or five finally, steps, finally yeah. He, he was great drumming stuff. and he was, yeah. you know, strutting right into us, strutting if you strutting goobler. Struter. So it was fun. It was fun time. So that's uh, some of the set pieces. We have a couple of deadheads that, that Mark's found through the years, some giant deer here. Yeah. And, yeah. and then uh, over here on this side behind you, there's a, a deer that we killed. It was the first deer I had killed. First buck I had killed since I had come back to hunting again. So I took about a 10-year hiatus there. And uh, we were sitting there at uh, uh, Walnut, Grove. Walnut Grove. Yeah, and What did we call him? Gnarly? Gargoyle. Gargoyle. Mm. And he, he stepped out, and uh, he's all screwed up. He was kind of limping, and he was obviously something was wrong with him. We, yeah. I, at th- those days, we were shooting Thompson Centers. It was a single shot. Mm-hmm. So I hit him, and... Dad's like, oh, put another shell. He's running right at us. And so I'm trying to, you know, pop it open, put another bullet in the gun and, you know, get ready to shoot again. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like, where is he? Where is he? And he's like, he's right here. I look up and he's right below us. <laughs> so I, free, us. I just freehand put it up and shoot him. He drops in his tracks. Shoot from so, the hip. Yeah. <laughs> when we got up to this deer, we talked about this deer in a podcast not long ago. Mm-hmm. He was, his body was so squishy. The mushy buck. The mushy buck. It you remember weird. that? It yeah, was it was very odd. Very yellowy when we went to kind of skin right. it and cape it and like all that. Like he had either been gored or something and it yeah, just had infected. filled up on him. Yeah. 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 So, so that's a little of the history here on the podcast set. And, so basically uh, it's Matt's. No, just these two things. To nothing, Matt. nothing else. Just these two <laughs> things. There's no Tim item. Sorry, Tim. <laughs> yeah. Tim, what do you Someday. got? Tim's know. here. He's on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough for me. But our logo is new also. Like, I'm really excited about the logo. Looks and nice. Looks good. Kind of an homage to where we've been and also where we're going there, yeah, too. Yeah, there's a few, uh, as the kids call them, Easter eggs Easter in there eggs. for where we're heading with uh, with things. So, so where's Waldo kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, that's right. So we're excited mm-hmm. to, uh, you know, unveil this thing, get rolling. And yeah. uh, I think we have a new era of the podcast in front of us. Mm-hmm. Well, I do have something on the set. What do you got? All right. So, Matt, I know you and I have a little bit of an unofficial competition. I'm afraid Terry might get a little 
jealous at what I'm about to <laughs> I, show here? I don't think so. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Someone found a shed. That's bigger than the one I found at my place. A little bit. <laughs> just... <laughs> I am jealous. I can't that's, tell you how many miles I've walked. That's the one this, shed you got this, this is year. What I came up with. I only got this one. Year. I, but you got a deadhead too. The whole I year. I did get a deadhead. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. You're committed. <laughs> Listen, we're hunting not the primo spots. <laughs> Walking the big woods. That's right. That's, well, and a lot of people make it look very, very easy, but boy, you can put on the miles. I mean, you literally, and it's hard to find them in a timber. It's not always easy. I mean, if they're not there, you're not going to find them. Mm -hmm. We had Booty on the podcast talking about kind of his methods to his madness because he finds some giants. He's he always been good at it. Booty has tremendous eyesight. Always. And uh, he gave us kind of a tidbit, a tip that we I had not heard before because you always hear south-facing hillsides. He was like the giants. He calls us the, the, slobs. the slobs. He's like north-facing. He's like the north right. That was his mm -hmm. tip. Yep. And we actually had one of our listeners I saw on the Rack Pack on Facebook that he, he found a big, wasn't it a match set? If I remember right, uh, I don't remember, but, but it was he, a good size on a north north facing hillside. Like he used that advice and went what and found. Do you know? I would agree to, with that to a certain point, and I think it really is very dependent on food and the weather conditions for that season. Mm. You know, if you got eighteen mm. inches of snow and and you know twenty degree or ten degree temperatures for an extended period when they're about to drop often you'll find them on the south facing hillsides. Yeah. Sure. But if you get these moderate temps like we had this year, you know, we were dipped down in the cold and all of a sudden we were warm again. And mm -hmm. we dipped down in the cold and it was warm again. They literally left my farm. It was crazy how they just evacuated the place this year and I had food left over, which never happens. So oftentimes those get dispersed and you do find them on north facing hillsides. But I kind of think it's weather dependent oftentimes. It's incredible to me how there are so very few hard and fast rules with deer hunting. There are always <laughs> exceptions. Always. Play the wind's always. about one of the only ones <laughs> that mm -hmm. you can pretty much try to yeah. stick to. Herb yeah. Schultz, play the wind right, mess up, and get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that was his line. <laughs> well, we've got some treats for the listeners and the viewers on this new kind of format. We've got a new segment, and we're kind of mixing things up with the sequence of how we do things also. Yeah, so, you know, with, with this, we wanted to, you know, there's... DeerCast is such an important part of our podcast, obviously. And, you know, there's so many elements to it, but one of the main elements would be like the social feed and some of the great content that gets put in, whether it's from the fan shares, from the viewers and listeners, or whether it's our team members, or, mm -hmm. you know, some of the DeerCast, um, uh, you know, like Scott and, and Kyle Robinson and the people that help us behind the scenes with content. Yeah. They put up some viral stuff in there. So we're going to do a new viral moment called the, uh, what? The real wild clip of the week. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we're going to jump into it right now. Why don't we? Let's do it. So we're going to react to the real wild clip of the week. Each week's going to be a new clip and it's going to be a short segment. And uh, this one's pretty cool. Scary. All right. Let's see that beautiful bean footage. All right, so we got a bobcat that just totally attacks an unsuspecting deer, at, basically at a feeder here, which I don't understand how that deer didn't see the bobcat coming it's up. snow-covered ground, so it's not like the bobcat is very camouflaged. It's sticking out like a sore <laughs> yeah. thumb. The deer's got its head down, and this bobcat just kind of creeping up, uh, creeping up, and then... Alan, roll that footage for us one more time. So as he creeps up to him, the deer's facing the bobcat. That's what I don't understand. Like, you can't... If you're a human, you're not getting that close, which it looks like it's a young deer. So granted, it looks like it's a younger deer. But the, then the noise, which, I mean, it's just like that growl, that bobcat growling. It's crazy how he attacks well, or she or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We want to be, we don't, we don't want to assume <laughs> a gender on a particular <laughs> animal right, without bro. knowing for sure. We get canceled before <laughs> we get going on this new podcast. Who knows how that bobcat identifies itself. <laughs> and, and, and who knows what's going through that deer's mind. It may be thinking, this is a bobcat. It's, it's not a mountain lion. <laughs> but, st but still, you think you think that's going through its mind? <laughs> Who knows what it's thinking? But it just seems so un unaffected by it. Yeah. What do you think, Terry? I thought the deer thought it's cold. There's snow. I'm hungry. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's into it. He really was clueless that the cat was even there. He was clueless. We're seeing it one more time here. I mean, and that 
the bobcat jumps on the deer's back and yeah. basically rides it out of screen. Yeah. So and you can tell. Go ahead. Crazy that they got it on trail camera like that. Yeah. Crazy to catch that kind of moment. Well, and when those claws come out of those sheaths on their paws, you can tell how effective they are because that deer just, or that bobcat just kind of hitched a ride on that deer <laughs> just with its claws. <laughs> Terry, remember that time we were at Dukem in Kirksville with Tommy and I jumped on your back? I think it was. Oh, yes. Dream I season. I folded season like two. a <laughs> folded like melted a, butter stick. <laughs> <laughs> scratched up your glasses, so it's a lot like that. Scratched <laughs> up my nose. Bro. Cat Fury <laughs> That's attacks right. again. Cat Fury no, attacks. No, he was overweight at the time. <laughs> Those were my skinny days. I and I was that clueless. Back. I didn't know he was going to do it. He ran. We were walking across the street, and he ran, and he jumped on my back, and we just, oh. I mean, we landed right in the middle of the pavement. There may have been cocktails involved. Possibly. Yeah. When I was four years old, I remember seeing the, the, three, the, the three Stooges. One of them pulled the chair out. You know, the classic, pull the chair out from someone as they're sitting down. We were at a wedding reception, oh. and there was a lady going to sit down with her beer. And I thought, hey, I'll do what I saw the Three Stooges do. And I pulled that folding chair back. Are you lying? She went down hard. Like, Did your dad beat you? Well, <laughs> You did that to some, some other lady? I was four years old. Can you so imagine Bo, your son? Yes. I <laughs> yeah, he would this. totally do that. <laughs> yeah. Years later, my mom was telling me that this lady was talking about potentially suing us because oh, I think she hurt her tailbone in the process. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is going to be great. Like everyone will laugh. But then people were just terrified and shocked. <laughs> horrified. Somebody needs to feed that hurt. kid. <laughs> Everybody was horrified. <laughs> Have you ever heard the story about my mom, your grandmother, telling that story that dad did that to her? At no. A, at uh, some, maybe. Yeah. Oh, my God. She was not happy. Where yeah. were they? Tell the story. Well, I, I wasn't there, obviously. This was when they were, I guess, dating or something, but the, he, <laughs> thought, he <laughs> thought it was funny. Swoon. She didn't think it was so funny. That's or they right. were at a wedding they or something. They were dating. They were dating. They yeah, they were at married. a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Chicks dig this. She did this. not forget that. I mean, to this day, she's <laughs> yeah. still pissed over that. And if you, we've had grandma on the podcast. It has been a while back, but she doesn't hold back <laughs> <in> her feelings, <laughs> no. to say the least. <laughs> oh. So... I yeah. imagine there's a lady somewhere in Grundy County, Illinois, that probably has like a bad sciatic <laughs> or feels the incoming thunderstorm <laughs> in her tailbone. Dang kid. <laughs> Thought he was so, going to be funny. Listen, before we jump into more shenanigans here, one more story. Terry yesterday, I'd asked him to get his phone. He, basically, he's had the same phone forever. And Terry's an Android guy. And if here in these walls, we're not huge fans of Android people because they cause us a lot of headaches. <laughs> Yeah, that's technology the wise. They cause the how many? Dang, how many cameras is that thing? Well, Matt, on? I need several. You need a case. <laughs> I have one. I just have a Doppler it. radar. I almost <laughs> dropped it up while ago out on the pavement. I was like, damn, I need to put that in a case. <laughs> so I bought okay. a case. All right. So the story goes: he needs a new phone. We wanted to load. We're working on a new version of DeerCast. It's going to launch here soon, and it's awesome. And we've had a beta version that you know several of us internally have been testing. Forrest has been testing it there with Terry, but Terry having an Android, there's been some roadblocks to say the yeah. least. So I said, look, you got to get a new phone. You got to get this thing on there so you can have it before turkey season. And so finally yesterday, he's like, all right, that's the day. He's going to come up Damn here today the, the podcast. I'm going to bite the bullet and do it. Well, I went to, I went to one of the local uh, little towns close to where we live. Went in there, walked in to see if they had this particular model number. They did not. And I said, well, is there anywhere close to, I was talking about Merrimack Bluffs because I was going to run some deer sausage up to mom. Oberly Dog for those fans. For those yeah. fans that have ever eaten Oberly, Oberly Dog. Oh, yes, it's phenomenal. So we had some Oberly Dog made, some summer sausage, and I was going to run some up to mom. So I said, is there any close to the Valley Park area? And they said, we have a store there in Fenton in Gravoy Bluffs. I was like, great. Could you call and check and see if they've got this particular phone? They got one. They're going to put your name on it, blah, 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 blah. I was mm -hmm. like, fine. Okay, this was before noon. All right. This was okay. 1130 or 12. So I go in there. We start to process. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shorten this story a little bit, but we start the content transfer, okay? And it doesn't, for, for whatever particular reason, it didn't tell us what percentage we were on or how many more, it ha how many more minutes it had uh, to go. It's like or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, knows like what's happening. Upload process. So this <laughs> thing goes on and on and on. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to run visit my mother and, and take this summer sausage over to her, the deer sausage. Uh -huh. And then I'll be back. I said, because this thing might take a while. 
Okay, so I go up to mom and I deliver the uh, the deer sausage and, and she was tickled. From had, a deer she killed? Yeah, these were deer oh, that cool. she killed. Forrest had trimmed them up beautifully and uh, I had them frozen, had the confirmation number, all the tag information, oh, yeah. dropped them yeah. off, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I get back from visiting mom. This thing's still transferring. Yeah. yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, it, it stopped. You know, it, it crashed. And then I had to start it again. I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. So long story short, it, it goes a little longer, you know, and it's still still transferring. And we're getting close to dinner time now. OK, this was so I started at lunch and Great. we're getting close to dinner. So <laughs> we got to know each other quite well. The, the guy that works at Verizon and myself. So we go next door to Buffalo Wild Wings, grab <laughs> grab a beer. And Which some, I'm sure is standard operating procedures <laughs> and boneless wings. All right. And, and I'll be doggone if this stupid thing didn't didn't crash again. It, it got up to a hundred and some thousand images because I had all my pictures. I had all my deer pictures. I had everything on there and it got up to a hundred, over a hundred thousand. Cause he was like, is, you think it's going to make a hundred? He's said, like, I you, don't know. Are you a deer hunter, sir? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Are these pictures of your family? No, no. And all I'll deer. Be, I'll be damned if it didn't crash again. So he, instead of using that app, then he changed apps and he goes, so this is the third time now. Is his name Joe Tierney? <laughs> he goes, well, no, we're not going to be able to transfer all of your data, but we're going to be able to get your pictures and this, that, and the other. I was like, I don't care. Just, just, just do whatever phone. you got to do to get it transferred. And to make a long story short, I didn't leave that store till quarter after nine. So I started, we started the process at 11 or 1130 in Festus at oh a Verizon gosh. store. I finished at 915. <laughs> I was without a phone for eight and a half hours yesterday. And I can't tell you how many messages I had and blah, blah, blah. I texted blah. them during the day. This, I told these guys here at the studio, because we've been, everybody's been working hard on the set and graphics and everything, getting ready for today. This is kind of our drop dead deadline to be ready. Yeah. And I said, hey, I'll give you guys a heads up. Well, you know, I was leaving the, the office and said, I'll give you a heads up when I talked to dad. And I texted him. He ne never replied. Finally, that night at like a nine o'clock, I texted mom. I'm like, is dad, did dad get a new phone today by chance? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, why are you trying to get a hold of him? She's like, let me call him. And uh, she calls him. She texts me back. She's like, OMG, wait till you hear this story. <laughs> you will not dad, believe it. And then text I sent you a text. Like, I said, call me. me. <laughs> well, I had just, I mean, I literally had just walked out the, out the door when she called me. And, and I said, you're not going to believe this. I, I've been nine hours trying to get this content transferred from my old phone. I come to find out the processor in the old phone, and Matt made a point. He said it might have been a, a cryptic file or something that may yeah. have stopped it. Troubleshooting. Yeah, he, does. He, he needs to work at Verizon with my buddy over there. I work at DeerCast with Tim, my buddy. Yeah. But I was, I literally was, I'm, I'm not technologically advanced anyway. So, you so, take that back. So I was extremely Hold frustrated when I left Verizon. Hold on, I do have something for that. But y'all don't say that. <laughs> Taking offense to that. I'm surprised that at some point you just didn't say, all right, give me an iPhone. Screw it. <laughs> Well, no, I was going to leave both phones there. I was going to leave both phones there, and then it went transfer complete. I was like, hot damn. So I, I was just getting ready to walk out the door, and I'll be doggone if it didn't crash again. And I was like, oh, God. What kind of mood were you in last night? I was pissed. I'd have been pissed, too. I was pissed. <laughs> So uh, I ended up going home with a phone and half of my stuff is not on here. So, so the guy, it goes, to, it goes to stop the last time. And this is what the guy says. You want to punch me right now, but you won't. <laughs> you want to buy me boneless wings right now. You probably did we won't. just become best friends? <laughs> yep. <laughs> we did. We did. I got his number. I got all his contact info. So uh, hey, guess I, what? He's trying to develop and launch an app. Did you tell him don't, to don't, luck? I, don't I, do I, it. I tried to. I, I hope told you him gave him career advice. <laughs> I said, you're not going to believe how expensive it is and how many problems you have and the maintenance. And yes. I said, don't do it. So anyway. Uh, so now anyone texting Terry, if you get a who dis response, that's why. <laughs> he does not know who you yeah. are. Wow. Well, yeah. I'm glad you got that. We'll get you set up with DeerCast today. Please, That's you'll the be a big reason boy. why. But, yeah. I, you know, I've got security cameras. Boy. I've got security cameras at my office, security cameras at my home, security cameras at the lake, 
All that was on here. None of it's on here. So anybody wants to go, go road trip, stop, time. stop. <laughs> and then all of my He's reconics kidding. pictures. We had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of reconics pictures in there. They're they're somewhere. Far still has them. Thank thank you. Yeah, well, the reconics app still has them. Yes. The annoying part is those are pictures that you have saved. already saved yes. from the app. And we meta tag or tagged them, so they were all in chronological well, order. The good part though is because of the way that the newest version of the app, they're meta tagged in there, and you can go to the tag of the deer and filter all those. Well, deer. I wasn't able to update the latest version of the app because my old phone didn't have any rooms. So. Oh well, <laughs> it's a new day for you. Yeah, it's a new day. It's moral the story kids listen to your son don't wait until your phone's five years old wait mm-hmm. until it's two years old get a new one yeah or all of us be can, a real man and get an get iphone a new phone every yeah. two years <laughs> i hear you but if you just go when we we have a group text with terry and they're all green <laughs> because terry and iphone people know this they're either blue or they're green what's green mean you got a loser in the midst <laughs> you've got a non-ios <laughs> user and that means any videos you send are going to be compressed to all get out. Well, yeah, uh, when I get them, they look like crap. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, that's our crap on Android segment. <laughs> but it's, the, according to those guys, they're, and they sell both, they, they couldn't say enough about this. They, oh, they said some of my friends that are in the tech industry, they will only use Android. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know there's reasons why you have them, but we're, uh, yeah. we're here, we're all, you know, creatives, and they all we all have Apple products. Every computer we got's an Apple, and like the way to share content back and forth, AirDrop, it makes it so much easier. Well, and and in all reality, the Android and the iPhones operate just a little bit differently with the yeah. with the app. So it's nice to have somebody that actually has an Android, so we can see what it's doing. Sure, because Terry. Forrest and I will sit side by side, and we may get a little bit different information. Listen, let's not let's not go down that path. <laughs> It's a winding, winding path. Yeah. <laughs> but tr- it's true, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and depending on what towers you're pinging off of, as far as your weather information or your weather data. That is true. You know, you want to make sure that we have a comparison and how the functionality all and all those, those things, things with the new version of DeerCast. It's going to be pretty But pretty it helps way. us. It helps Daddy. us improve the user's experience by having someone that's. That's right. You are th- a portion of our consumer. UX testing. Old. Android. Well, you know that <laughs> you if we weren't in boxes. this line of work, I'd still have a flip phone. <laughs> yeah. Listen, the DeerCast clock is off from my VCR clock. What's up with that? <laughs> so we talked last week with our friends from Analogics about what is the best way to kind of get your deer through this in between time between mm-hmm. winter mm-hmm. and spring green up. It's curious kind of what's happening on your property right now that, that you're doing to address that particular gap. Well, we're still, and I usually wait until all the antlers are off, and for the most part, the majority of them, everybody's seeing a, you know, a straggler here or there that might be packing both sides or one uh-huh. side. But every year we wait until the antlers are off, and then we mow down whatever's remaining. Uh, you know, if there's some residual when it comes to corn or beans or anything that might be standing. We just did our burning process with warm seasons. Mm, sure. We went through a, a big, big production trying to get all the warm seasons burnt. You know, picked up a few sheds there, providing a spot for the turkeys to strut. You know, they love those burns. So we've got that that pretty well mastered. Uh, doing some soil sampling right now, checking on our clover fields, making sure that we've got the uh, the right mixtures as far as the the uh, soil's concerned and mm-hmm. making sure it's in the right condition, pH is correct, because it does matter when it comes to that palatability, you know, what food plots they want to get onto. Those new plantings are always good because they're sucking so many nutrients out of the soil. Sure. And a new planting is always a big, big drawing card. So therefore, you want to make sure that all your other food plots are, are kind of in check. So we've been doing a lot of that. Uh, Forrest is also moving some stands, moving some blinds. He and Ben moved one yesterday Mm -hmm. and uh, doing a bunch of trimming. So I don't know if everybody else is still in deer hunting mode here in turkey season, but we are. I mean, we just do not let up. It's 365 for us. And we'll have one or two deer in mind that may or may not have made it through. The ones that did make it through, you're already running it through. Okay, where can I kill him at? Mm -hmm. That's why the Reconyx app is so important in tagging those to look at that chronological order where where was he at during daylight hours on what days? Mm-hmm. And then where did he go? Where is he walking to and from? Where is he bedding? Where is he feeding? Where is he bedding? Where is he feeding on a daily basis? And and becomes because early season is so much different than during the rut and so much different than late season, you have a different approach. And that's what we're setting up for now, some of our early season spots. Sure. So we're really, really cognizant of where those deer are moving on clover 
mm-hmm. and are then as the season progresses, we're in there hitting beans and or corn, and uh, and then how we're going to approach those. So it's, it's a big it's a big time for us. Everybody else is turkey hunting. We're we're still deer hunting. You to know, me, it's kind of deer. It's fun to like because deer season is so many months away right now. It's fun to be doing some actively doing something to benefit your deer hunting in the fall. I think it is because that's the difference between killing them and not killing them a lot of years. You know, it's yeah. being prepared and really having a, a, a foolproof plan. Now, those a lot of times can go awry. You know, it might be foolproof in the beginning and you go, man, I don't know what happened. Maybe. We never saw him. He never, he never walked by. It <laughs> may have been kind of like your season. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I was talking with my buddy Tony about shed hunting, and I was like, I don't care about keeping the sheds to me it's just i do need to flaunt like i will flaunt it but do you need some magnifying glass listen we can't all pick up 80 inch sides nope (laughs) case in point but to me like the shed hunting is only interesting as insofar as i know who's still around what's the potential for next year's season i don't need more antlers around my house I just, yeah no. well, and to to the point i made a while ago you can't pick them up if they're not there and and those warmer you know warmer seasons like we warmed up early this year you know and we're starting to get green already and i know down in some of the southern regions they're full bloom on a lot of their foliage already but if you get an early uh season or early spring they just vacate. I mean, it takes no excuse for them to start going out into those pastures and picking up those, you know, those new shoots, those legumes, and some of the things that are popping up early. Yeah. And it, and they have it doesn't take much reason for them to leave that timber that you think they're going to be in. They're just not there. So you can't find them if they're not there. They're dropping somewhere else. And this year was really really odd for us. All of our good spots they weren't in. I mean, they just weren't there. Historically, where I mm-hmm. find sheds year after year after year after year, they weren't there this year. What a and weird we still spring. found a light. We found a lot, but they were in different spots. Yeah. yeah. You said it warmed up, but realistically, it cooled off. It warmed up. It cooled off. It warmed up. It cooled Every off. Thursday, yeah. it's 70. <laughs> yeah. But, but to a whitetail, that was a warming trend. They can withstand a day or two of cool temps. And then when it warms back up into the 60s or 70s, depending on where you're at geographically, mm-hmm. uh, they can withstand that. To them, it was a pretty mild, mild winter and mild spring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We want to help our buddy Patrick out. All right. So let's get into the question of the day. The question of the day is proudly brought to you by Victory Archery. Victory Archery, the carbon arrow experts. Easy for me to say. I'm curious to see what Mark and Terry Drury's opinion of double cropping, as some people call it, is. Double cropping. If if I'm understanding the question, I'm assuming he's talking about either rotation double cropping, meaning you would either, you know, harvest your corn or beans and then follow it up with wheat or, or oats, or he's talking about planting beans internally within the corn, That's which, it. which we do that quite often. And I love doing that. I absolutely love it because number one, the beans kind of add a little bit of nitrogen back in for the corn. Mm-hmm. And it also gives the deer security cover when they're nipping the tops of them off. And that also leaves your, your destination bean fields alone. So how do you actually plant that? We, we'd either go through and plant the corn first and follow it up with beans because like that's... Mean, like right then? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And we, we do it all the time. And it, it takes pressure. It takes food pressure or browse pressure off of the beans that you're wanting to hunt. And it also gives them security cover where they can go right down the rows. And you don't care if they eat them or not. You know, you sure. actually want them it's to. It's a bonus. It's a bonus. Huh. And once their bellies are full, they may leave some corn alone as well. You know, you're trying to get their bellies full so they leave your corn alone and or your, your bean food plots. Okay. So Double we cropping. do it quite frequently. I love the idea. I love doing it. Love the technique. Don't you guys also like put uh, biologic mm-hmm. in, in mm-hmm. rows and was it corn or beans? Which one or both? Well, we, we're doing it in beans usually. And a lot of that time we'll overseed <laughs> because you plant it in the fall. So any place that's browsed down fairly heavily uh-huh. where you know you're going to get some sunlight in there. And we know right before rain that it, it might drive those seeds down in there because that biologic seeds so much of it, the maximum and, and uh, winter bulbs and sugar beets. So many of that, those seeds are real, real tiny. Mm-hmm. And it don't take much to get them down into the get seed to soil contact. So we'll put it right before rain and then get pretty good results there where once the bean browse is, you know, the browse pressure eats all the beans and you got biologic left coming up through it. You wouldn't do that with like clover, would you, and corn? Mm, no, no, probably not. Yeah. No. Patrick's question was two minutes long. Oh, you just, you just <laughs> highlighted it. I, yeah, I tried to, tried to cut it down a little bit, which is great. Like if folks want to leave us a question of the day, it's awesome if you can make it pithy. 
What else did he want to know? Was it something besides the? No, he crop? he just kind of went into his scenario, and and that was like what he was thinking about was planting two different crops at the mm -hmm. same time. Thank you, Patrick. I think it's a great idea if you're trying to you know maybe save some of your other food plots. It gives them a reason to be in security cover and and feed on nibble on those beans. Nibbles. Nibble. Nibbles um, and bits. I was curious what. You were talking because the session, the uh, segment was sponsored by Victory Archery. What what arrow are you shooting right now? Well, I'm in the process of changing because I'm changing bows, but mm. was okay. shooting at 400. Okay, rip. Was it called rip? Mm -hmm. R I P. Mm -hmm. Victory. Right. Rip right through yep. them. I love them. Absolutely love them. Is it is that a micro diameter or is no. it the, the regular? Far shoots a micro diameter. Yeah, I think yeah. Mark does too. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Standard. Yeah. Well, okay. So, what's the what would be the difference? Why would you go to the the larger diameter arrow versus micro diameter? What's a pro? I'm not shooting much poundage at all anymore. So it's all about kinetic energy and power stroke and draw length and all the other things that enter into it to to you know find out what that velocity is finally going to end up. Mm -hmm. But I'm shooting extremely low poundage and. And I go Doug Hutchison, uh, one of the best people on the planet. I, you know, I usually set my bow up with him each and every year, and he kind of guides me through the process. And I don't have to worry too much about overspining or any of that stuff because I'm shooting very little poundage. But he kind of helps me on what size and what weight and all sure. that jazz. Sure, sure. So, <laughs> and it's I'm not exactly ripping up the velocity meters. What? I'll tell you, you know, chronograph. <laughs> Well, that's a great thing about today's bows. Is you just don't like you don't have to pull a whole lot, and you still get a, a good amount of energy transfer into the arrow. Well, plus, speeds. you know, you're basically waiting for them to be thirty and in. Yes, you know, so yeah, you're not taking 50 that's yard exactly shots. what I'm doing. I don't feel comfortable <laughs> taking those longer shots anymore. Yeah, yeah. Not that I can't do it. I just, I just don't want to do it. You know, I'd rather wait till they're. I call it dead zone. When I know they're dead, that's when I'll shoot them. Sure, probably wise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of heartache. It's a good feeling, too, when you say, you know what, I'm not going to take an ill-advised, and a lot of guys can do it. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I respect those guys that can shoot, you know, Levi, yeah. uh, he, he can shoot it. But, you know, when you go and you, you make a, a disciplinarian move and you say, I'm just not going to shoot unless he gets in my roundhouse. Yeah. It's a good feeling when they get in there and you go, he's dead. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, it, it's also, I think it, it says something about your strategy that you were able to get within 20, 25 yards mm -hmm. of that, of that animal. Mm -hmm. I know 50 firearm. for some <laughs> firearm <laughs> season. You could go back through the, through the years and look at many of our firearm shots, but because so much of what we have, our setups are set up for archery tackle. You know, all those shots when you got a big deer in there at 30 yards and you're shooting with firearms, it's like chip shot, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all right. Some, some of us need that too, <laughs> even with a gun. All the help we can get. That's right. Well, let's bump over into the wildlife word segment. It's brought to you by Hunter Specialties, makers of the DOD signature series of turkey calls. And uh, our, our boys, Jim Richmond and Jeremy Kerber, went down to Texas to hunt some Rios. Oh, did they? cast contributors. Yep. And they, uh, they brought their the signature series with them, and they tore up them birds. Good, good. Those are good guys, too. They, they do great work. One of them is better than the other, but <laughs> on the whole. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? Together, it's not important. <laughs> Jim or Jeremy. Let them fight that out. <laughs> right. <laughs> They'll have to be the determiners of that. So right now, have you started, because, you know, this is when it airs. We're in the first week of April, and this is airing. Missouri season starts in a couple of weeks. Be here before you know it. Have you started getting out any of your calls? Have you started? Hell no. He gives no, us the look. I'll do it maybe the evening before. Well, or the morning I get ready to go. I'll throw one in and go, boy, this sounds like crap. <laughs> and I'll blow it anyway. It's I don't just know. your fault. <laughs> I'm not, and I, I shouldn't even say this, but I'm not as ate up with turkeys as I am with deer. I, I live, sleep, oh, you drink, too. eat whitetails. I always have. have. A love fest. Now, if, now, if I was he starts shooting turkeys with his bow, then it's game over. He will never do that. <laughs> if, if I was, you know, an accomplished caller like Mark and Stoltz and Walter Parrott and Chris Parrish and all and Matt Van Sice and Billy Yargis, if I could call like those guys, I'd probably be more ate up with turkeys because yeah. they're just that good. Yep. I mean, yeah. it, they are the difference makers between 
killing one and going home empty-handed. They really are. And I've seen them do it a million so that's times. that's our problem. We're not difference makers. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Go home empty-handed quite a bit. The key they're... is to invite them, one to, one of those guys, to come hunt your place. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. i got to start learning how to call at some point. I'm 41. <laughs> I can use the box. I can use the, late, you know, the, the, the pot call. But, man, that mouth call is really tough. Last year, I tried to focus in and use it more and more. And, you're practicing, but it's just not good enough to use in the field. The hardest thing I think in our lives is finding time where we are not completely disturbing someone's peace with our practicing. Yeah. Well, basically it's the truck ride to and from work, but even that you annoy yourself. Yeah, (laughs) Really you are. You're disturbing your own peace in in a little bitty truck. You know, it's like, all right, this is horrible. (laughs) What's that man doing in the lane next to me? <laughs> Your dog cussing I yourself. He, I think he's uh, practicing to be a puppet, a puppeteer. Uh, okay, the wildlife word this week is multiple choice. As per usual, uh, the outside sheath of a turkey's spear, a spur, Whoa. is made of. <laughs> We've gone. Who gets you? <laughs> They're armed this year. The outside sheath of a turkey's spur is made of keratin. But what's inside? I'm sure, it's not creatine. Spur? Pretty sure. <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> is is it A, chewy nougat? <laughs> B, spongy blood-filled tissue? Mm. C, bone? Or D, sensitive nerves? What's inside a turkey's spur? We always let the guest go first, Terry. I got to go with A. Chewy, chewy nougat. nougat. <laughs> <laughs> We've been missing out on a treat. That's where the drum, the drumstick uh, ice cream comes Sometimes from. they're missing. If you've noticed, the spur's missing mm-hmm. on a turkey. Yeah. No, another turkey already nibbled it off. <laughs> they're chewy nougat. we got more nibblers. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with bone. C. It's probably B, isn't it? Bone saw is ready. <laughs> it's bone. Okay, look at me. You win. Oh, Although on. I really <laughs> thank you guys, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Audience now, a relatively live studio audience. I just went like this on my leg, and I gave him the answer. Okay, <laughs> just like school again, huh, Matt? That's yeah. Terry was in class with me. <laughs> a lot of wrong answers given over time. <laughs> Ill advice. Wrong so, answers. So what else you got? Choices. Well, not much. I, <laughs> I was giggling to myself thinking, or yesterday was I was writing the show sheet. Chewy nougat. <laughs> <laughs> and I picked it. <laughs> I mean, it sounds delicious. I would love it. He is a candy bar fan. Loves the nougat. I mean, <laughs> mounds. Who can blame him? Nobody yeah. loves we, mounds. What's wrong oh, with mounds? Well, the Almond coconut? Joy. The Almond Joy is the That's superior. Good too. Yeah. But, uh, mounds is dark chocolate. You no, know, with the lie. Oh, the the, the oh, lie Scott likes mounds. Candy bar Losers. is. <laughs> The Milky Way. It's I a like t- Milky Way. Oh. All right. We need Payday. to move along. Payday. I can, yeah. Producer I can Matt's rolling over back there. Like He wanted us to shorten with the new show, <laughs> shorten our format. Here we are telling stories about Nougat <laughs> on top of King of the Spring, <laughs> Dream Season 10. Reminds me of a story I have about a Werther's. <laughs> <laughs> Werther's original. <laughs> <laughs> Terry almost went down the path. The chewy ones? <laughs> the chewy Werther's? There is no chewy Werther's, is uh-huh. there? I don't know. They've got them now. Yeah. Oh, soft. man. It's soft Werther's. I can't wait to be an old, old guy. people. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to be an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited about chewy Werther's. <laughs> you <made. laughs> I don't need to take this. Well, <laughs> luckily it's almost over. No, like we have early adult onset like ageism because like I think we're, we're going to be excited about hitting that point. My someday. mom likes them. Okay. Uh, Next week we're talking about tapioca. <laughs> Nobody likes tapioca. What's wrong you with tapioca? You take that back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing. You might wrong as well with be it. an Android user, Tim. <laughs> 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 Go home and watch my murder she wrote on VCR. But y'all don't say that. <laughs> All right. How about we welcome in our newest Rack Pack members? Uh, you can hop on to Facebook and search 100% Wild Rack Pack, and we pop up, answer the membership questions, and we might let you in. And then Tim provides me a list of names to read. I butcher them every week. There's a fake name somewhere in there. It could be one or five names because of the way I pronounce them. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get rolling here. Kyle Steffens, Max Fuller, Anthony Myers, Katie McKe- McKezzie? McKezzie? 
Katie? It looks like McKeezy. McKeezy. Art Cherry Range. <laughs> Art Cherry Range. Art Cherry. All right. Okay. Ryan Westbrock, Jordan Coates. How are you supposed to say that, Tim? Because it's some way to make Old fun archery of Archery Range. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> this is BS. I don't know. Barbecue last last Art week was pretty good. Tree range. Sorry, I just popped. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say that. And what kind of viewership do you have? Low to none. <laughs> I feel it declining. If they're Perfect. on, if they're still listening by this point, they're, they're, they're going. Fans. I'm out of here. These <laughs> three monkeys. No, this is the good stuff. <laughs> Oh, he said the best for last. <laughs> right. And a super deer caster, Brad Odom, uh, hopped on. and uh, I love Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Brad's the reason we're all here. <laughs> he really is. He, he has been uh, a day one deer caster. He says, uh, you guys really set the bar with the podcast from working class bow hunter to T-Bone Travis Turner. You've had some great outdoorsmen on the show, and I've really enjoyed listening to these guys. And Chris Parrish seems to be an amazing person and a great outdoorsman. You can see his passion for the outdoors. I'm glad he made time to be on the show. Guys, keep up the amazing work, and good luck this coming turkey season. Amazing. Well, he's he's 100% accurate to that. I want to give a big shout out to T-Bone. Oh, yeah. Was I've been staying in contact good, with him and he's, podcast. he's working hard. There is no, uh, one individual with more of a positive attitude than he has. So best of luck to our buddy T-Bone. We love him and, uh, just hope he continues doing well, going down the path of recovery and rehab and, and, uh, just can't say enough good things about him. He's best in the industry. Yeah. Bar none. A lot of people would, you know, would turn inside themselves rightfully so in a situation like that thinking could you, know, you imagine i i just just can't and here he is out inspiring other people in the light of his you know of, of his major challenge with with having a, a leg partially amputated he did the single best thing i think you could possibly do and that was he attacked it and he kept a positive attitude attitude throughout he just he approached it differently yeah. than most people would and i, I we just love him hell Absolutely he's been catching him. fish and he's Getting geared up for turkey season, and it's hard to, hard to stop the man. So big shout out to T-Bone. Everybody continue those prayers. I mean, they're heartfelt, and he's he's much deserved. All yeah. right. Yeah. Wow. Well, First podcast in on the new set. It was nothing, epic. Nothing blew up? <laughs> <No>. Terry. <laughs> Rolling his eyes as he says epic. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, it was cheek. something. We did talk about deer hunting for a little bit. We did work it in. That's the only part that people will listen to. We can maybe tell them in the show notes where to go. (laughs) Here's the timestamp for real material, real real content. (laughs) Everything else is... Nothing real worthy, I'm sure, here, but... uh, Nougat talk (laughs) begins at uh, 23... Nothing 14. worth anyone wanting to promote it, but <laughs> <laughs> we're still here. Here's a tidbit of information this time of year because hear, tur- turkey season has already started in some of the southern regions. You literally could pull audio files of Matt Van Sice and Billy Yargis and some of those guys calling Stoltz and just let it play for an hour. Ooh, that's like <laughs> an orchestra. Listen to it more than this, you're saying? I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty good idea. I do have to say <laughs> Try thank that you. for about five minutes. I do have to say thank you to our friends at the First Baptist Church in Kabul, Missouri. They invited me down for a wild game dinner. Oh, great. We had bison. I ate my first bobcat. No, it was, was good. It this one back here that we just saw on the real, sure. real <laughs> wild. Someone, someone took it out. I saw it riding a deer around town and took it out. <laughs> I didn't know that you could prepare a bobcat. I didn't know that they did. I. Yeah, the, a, a guy down there traps them, like traps a lot of them. How was it? And it was a little chewier than I expected, but it was, <laughs> but it was still good. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Did it taste like chicken? No, it was more pork-ish. Ah, uh, but still good. The old chewy yeah. pork. What do they? What do they have? Like raccoon, Mongolian raccoon or something? Oh my god! Pass. <laughs> I took a bite. You're making me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's lunch too late time. to go to lunch. There's got to be a place around here, thirsty. though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. But uh, we had a great time down there with those guys. It was, it was a fun visit. raccoon and bobcat. Yeah. And yeah. bison and venison and mule deer. I would have stuck deer. with the bison burger. Hard to beat a bison burger. Say that. Hard to beat a bison burger, folks. <laughs> Brought any to you by bison snake? burgers. Any rattle, rattlesnake? No rattlesnake. No. It's the Ozarks. So you just, I mean, you never know. There could be a possum dish in there. They call them yard dogs down there. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
There's a lot of different kinds of meats. Oh, Lord. well, it's about lunchtime here. I guess it's yeah, time to call her a day. Go out and see who's serving raccoon. <laughs> I got buffet just down the street. Yeah. Uh, Okay, All right. well, next week is episode number 260. Thank you, Tim. So, I mean... When we what? say it that way, we don't yet have a guest. You're not supposed to tell people Listen, that. I'm getting ready to go to the Bass Pro. So this week, this will air the week after we've been to the, um, the big uh, world fishing event down in Springfield, Missouri for Bass Pro. So... I'm hoping to talk. We're supposed to have dinner with Kevin Van Dam and a couple other guys. So I'm thinking maybe here soon, if uh, mm-hmm. if their calendars and schedules permit, we can get uh, a stud like KVD on talking talking a little fishing. Give us some tips here coming into the spring. And, and many people may not know this, but he's an avid hunter as well, Huge. which is how we got the relationship going. We started talking a little bit of fishing, which we don't do, and a lot of hunting, which he does do. So yeah. Yeah. it was it's a so, cool kind of so a cool it's a one way conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a neat conversation to have with him. Because he's one of the best fishermen. Terry, in the world. don't short yourself. I've seen you fish many a pond there in the farm during oh. spring turkey season. Two hundred two Zepco. Zepco. Mm-hmm. Classic. Three hundred three when you step up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe some. I'll there. tell you one quick fishing story, and I, I didn't know that I even did it, but we were in the uh, we were fishing the flats down in the Gulf uh, off of Tampa with uh, Hot Rod Gillis back in the day, and it, this was a guy that was. Uh, they did the song Slow Ride. I don't know, remember, oh, remember that take song? Take it easy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. we were fishing the flats down there, and, and I caught a grand slam of whatever. I, I had no idea. <laughs> and he said, Dude, you said know, the, there's people that fish an entire lifetime and don't catch what you did in one day. And so, wonder what it was. I have no idea. <laughs> you, sure, you sure they weren't just being nice to you? No, oh, hey, Terry, no, look Terry, at you. They treat him like special. No, Stoltz can vouch for that. He was with me. Oh, okay. No one's caught three eels in one day. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> it, was, it was quite an experience, though. Did you get sick? No. Uh-uh. That could you? ruin. I I tell you, what did make me sick, we bid a project in that we were low bidder on, and we left a bunch of money lay on a construction side, <laughs> and I got the phone call while we were out there, and I, I wanted to throw up. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I should have been at work. Yeah, that's <laughs> what you get for fishing. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. We've had enough, Tim. Well, everyone, we hope you like our new home. It's your home, too. You're stuck here with us. <clears throat> we need more questions of the day, more subscribers, mm-hmm. more uh, reviews. Rack packers. That's right. So we need more. Everything. Better guests. Share it with your friends. <laughs> well, we need better guests. We definitely need better guests. Two hundred dollars. It's two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars is two hundred dollars. My guy. All right. Thank you, Terry. For You're quite welcome. In. I enjoyed it. it. What a great set. set. Looks awesome. You guys right. did a good job with it. Appreciate it. Till next time. Peace out. See ya. The results are in. DeerCast said great. It doesn't exist anywhere else but in DeerCast. Hunters love DeerCast's exclusive deer movement forecast. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's.